with no further ado, we'll, we'll get straight into the, the, the matters that are surrounding Budget Week itself. Now, I say that because there's another issue that uh, is very live at the moment, and we expected it to feature in the budget, but it didn't quite make it there. But it's actually in the committee rooms as we, as we speak at the end of this week, and it is RTE, uh, the controversy that rolled right through the summer and gave no shortage of headlines and had every pub and cafe talking in the country. And they were back in the dock as such today. And Louise, you were following this committee meeting very closely, so I'll let you tell everybody what it was like there today. Yeah, so I thought my days covering RTE at the Public Accounts Committee were over. It appears not. Kevin Backhurst and co were back at the Oireachtas Public Accounts Committee this morning. And that is the dull spending watchdog. And they kind of keep an eye on the finances. So perhaps if you have been following some of the committee meetings over the summer, you might have seen the media committee meetings. They were a little bit more flashy is not the, quite the right word, but people looking for their headlines, whereas the Public Accounts Committee is quite focused on finances. So they were really getting into the nitty gritty of it this morning. And we, like you said, Fergal, RTE wasn't really mentioned a lot during the budget. But what we do know is that Media Minister Catherine Martin has said that she will give RTE 16 million euro in interim funding this year. And Kevin Backhurst, in his opening statement to the committee, said that RTE were quite grateful for that. He said that there is a lot of cost cutting going on at the moment. And he kind of laid out kind of different things that they're doing there. As we know, they've put a recruitment freeze on all these different kind of things. Um, one thing that had come up before was the potential sale of the Montrose site in Donnybrook. Um, they are still waiting valuations for that, Kevin Backer said. But what he was kind of saying is that it doesn't seem likely that they would move the whole of RTE out of Donnybrook and somewhere else. And I think that's something a lot of people were maybe expecting because, you know, it does cost money to set up other places. Like it's all well and good getting that big lump of cash straight away. But you also have to put that cash into setting up elsewhere and TV and radio equipment is expensive. So that was kind of the verdict on that one. But some really stark figures and some really stark confirmations from Kevin Backhurst at the committee and I suppose the main one was that RTE is on the brink if you like of insolvency he was saying that for the moment they have 68 million euro in cash reserves but if things keep going the way they're going if they don't get more money from the government we know that they were looking for interim funding of 34.5 million euro that's not even including the loss in the license fee revenue of 21 million euro so what kevin backers is saying is that if rte don't get more money they face being without cash from mid spring so not looking good for rte and i think that's kind of really been the story of the last couple of weeks and the last couple of months is that that loss in license fee revenue has really hit them in the pocket and people are facing really real cuts and really big, big decisions in there at the moment. Yeah, it's a, it's a scary prospect for RT. It was kind of like being one of the monoliths of Irish society. Everyone presumed it was just going to be there and go on forever. But if you're a good, if you're a business, as a going concern, if you're out of money, you know you could be you could be gone. You, you need a you need someone to bail you out. And with a state company, a uh, semi-state body like RT, uh, you know the. The, the 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 mom and dad bank if you like uh, that's going to be the state that's going to be the government and it's very interesting this week after the budget uh michael mcgrath and pascal dunn who were asked to it three times i was at one or two occasions where they were said well how much will you bail them out they wouldn't go near that when will you bail them out they wouldn't even go near that they said they're going to wait for reports and reports at the end of the year one of the agencies that looks into uh the funding of state agencies and where we are and their structure is new era and pascal dunn has been talking to them They've told him 60 million is the, the current figure. That includes what you were referencing there, Lewis, and the law, Louise, the loss of license revenue. That's running at around, you know, 40% of people are not paying their license when it comes to renewals. We can, we can get the figures from the media department week by week. And that means that RTE could be unviable going forward and insolvency by spring. So unless they get a bailout by let's say March or, you know, April, whenever you want to call the equinox, that is a scary prospect that we could have no RTE. I was down there myself this morning, just um, another show actually, and I met one or two people in the corridors from normal people, senior execs, and the mood on the ground there is somber. Uh, I'll tell you that. There's small little things as well that uh, the public probably uh, aren't too aware of, that uh, some program has been cancelled, we we'll say new ideas for programs. We know of people that have been told, no, just that's been parked for the time being. Uh, documentaries uh, are being, need more work on, they're being shelved. Um, 
pay rises. Some of them are public sector workers completely, and they're waiting to see if they get their pay rise, little 1%, 2% thing. They're worried about that. So they're all very, very worried down there. But then when I met one of the senior execs on the, the corridor, what he was really worried about is what do the public think? So the upper echelons of RTE down there are a little bit paranoid. They're thinking, oh my God, you know, how bad does this look? And the fact that they're in the doll again today, uh, it's not a good look. It's not a good look at all. And I know it was another long session. Louise, you are not looking forward to them coming in again. I've done it myself as well. I've been there for two or three of them. It's not fun when you're down in those lovely committee rooms in Leinster House that have no windows. I'm not sure if the air conditioning works. It's either too hot or too cold. They go on for hours and hours. So if it's uncomfortable for us, I can imagine what it's like for the witnesses when they come in there. 